How would you sum the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 98, 99, plus 100? There's an old story about the great mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss, that when he was still just a schoolboy, perhaps he was making too much noise or whatever it was, his teacher, school teacher, tells him, ask him, to sum these numbers. Now the teacher thought this would occupy him for quite some time. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. It would take a while to sum these all up. But Gauss was able to solve it almost instantly. How did he do it? Gauss recognized that to sum all the numbers, instead of going in order, 1 plus 2 plus 3, you could sum the first and the last. 1 plus 100. That would give you 101. Likewise, you can sum the second with the second to last. 2 plus 99 also gives you 101. And the third, 3, with the third from last, 98. And as you continue to pair these from both ends, you'll always get these pairs adding up to 101. Thus, the sum is just going to be 101 times the number of pairs. There's 100 numbers in total, and so the number of pairs is 100 divided by 2. So the sum just becomes 101 times 50, which is just 5,050. Pretty cool trick. From this observation, we can see a more general formula emerge. Instead of just summing from 1 to 100, let's say I want to sum in general 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to some number n, where n can represent whatever number I want, 100, 1,000, a million, whatever it might be. What will the sum come out to be? Well, reasoning just like before, we can sum these in pairs, where the first and the last sum to n plus 1, but likewise 2 plus n minus 1 also sums to n plus 1, and so forth, so you get several pairs. How many pairs do you get? Well, half as many as the number of numbers, so n divided by 2, so the total comes out to be n divided by 2 times n plus 1. There we have it, a formula for the sum of the numbers 1 through n. For example, if I want to simply solve what is 1 plus 2 all the way up to, say, 10, I would say, okay, I'm summing up to 10. So using my formula, I would have 10 times 10 plus 1, which is 11 divided by 2, and that ends up being 5 times 11, 55. Here's how we can use this formula. Okay, great. Now that we have a formula in hand, I want to introduce a summation notation that will often be helpful. Instead of writing 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 all the way through 100, we can use this summation notation using the Greek letter sigma, capital sigma for sum. We're going to say, I want to sum some letter i, where i is just an index, a counter, where i is counting that I'm going from 1 to 100. In this case here, I would abbreviate this by using the sigma notation, the sum from my counter i going from 1 all the way up to 10. Or in general, I have this formula for the sum of my counter going i from 1 up to n. I introduce this notation because now we can introduce small variations, like what is the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared? Let's think about what this means. The index is still going from 1 to n. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's saying, still adding up when i is 1, 2, 3, 4. But instead of just adding up i, I'm now adding up i squared. So I'm going to add up 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up until n squared. Or if I wrote what is the sum from i equals 1 to n of i cubed, that would simply mean I want to sum 1 cubed plus 2 cubed 
plus 3 cubed all the way up to n cubed. Now, it turns out, just like there's a formula for the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n, there are also formulas to give us shortcuts to figure out the sum of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared through n squared. That formula turns out to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Let's test it really fast. Let's say I want to calculate what is the sum of i squared from i equals 1 to 4. So what does this mean? This simply means that I'm going to have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. According to our formula, this should come out to just be n, which in this case is 4, because we're summing up to where the index is 4. It should just be 4 times 4 plus 1, which is 5, times 4 times 2 plus 1, so that's 9, all over 6. What does that come out to be? 4 times 9 is 36, divided by 6 is 6, times 5 is 30. Comes out to be 30. And we can check what is 4 squared, that's 16, plus 3 squared, that's plus 9, that's 25, plus 4 squared, that's plus... 4, so at 29, plus 1 squared, sure enough, if we sum those up, we get 30. So the formula works. Likewise, there's also a formula for summing up the numbers 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed all the way up to n cubed, where the formula here is just n squared times n plus 1 squared all over 4. So again, you can do an example and check this. Maybe we'll just do a quick one. Let's say I want to ask what is the sum of i cubed from i equals 1 to 3. So this comes out to be, this just means, this represents, this is just asking what is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed. Now, it wouldn't be too hard to verify explicitly what that is. You know, that's just asking what is 1 plus 8 plus 27 should be 36, right? So not hard to figure that out, but let's double check that our formula works. According to our formula, this should be three squared, n squared, so that's nine, times n plus one, that's three plus one, that's four squared, so it's nine times 16, all over four. 16 divided by four is four, so it's nine times four, which again is 36, agreeing with what we had above. So these formulas work. Okay, cool. These formulas give you nice shortcuts in order to sum the numbers 1 through n, or 1 squared through n squared, or 1 cubed through n cubed. So now we both have a concise way of writing summations and a quick way of solving them using these formulas.